Well, hi, YouTubers. Okay, the trailer of Star Trek Discovery just dropped, and I'm looking forward to this film. Oh, not film, actually, TV show, because it's been many, many years since Voyager, or see, Enterprise, even kept, went off the air. And the thing is, back in the day, we were quite spoiled. We had the next gen, then DS9, then Voyager, then Enterprise, and Enterprise kind of died in its arse and did not live up to its potential. But uh, some episodes were good, but it just lacked a lot of what Star Trek actually needed to be. So. But I'm looking forward to the Star Trek Discovery on Netflix. I'm so pleased I have Netflix. Um, I don't really watch it at the moment. I'm a little bit too busy. There's so many shows everyone's telling me about. Like um, The Santa Monica Diet. My sister watched it and told me how great it was. But um, I have not had the time to really sit down and watch anything properly on Netflix. I still want to watch the, um, the Good Witch TV series because I actually do enjoy the films. And But anyway, Star Trek Discovery. Official trailer, Netflix. And here we go. Let's cut out the volume. Here we go. coming soon okay just kill that oh my god oh my god now one thing i like is it has traditional klingons now in the um traditional kirk one okay the original series um the klingons were all flat-headed and there was that episode um um they were just typical humans with face paint okay we're not gonna go there but then in um the trouble not trouble tribbles that was a tr um, trouble and tribulations i do believe um wolf was like when they went back into the past it was like we don't talk about it. And then Enterprise, he found out that due to some genetic manipulation by, um, by, oh, what is his name? Brett Spiner's character, um, Noonien Soong, of all things. Um, he, there was like this virus that Klingons got, which um, flattened their ridges. And which I thought was nice, kind of, that was a good episode. I really enjoyed that episode of Enterprise. So, I like that. These are traditional Klingons. These are how they were, how they proper bloodthirsty Klingons that you didn't really see that much of in the movies. This is the modern day movies. The imperialistic Klingons. But however, there's an episode of Enterprise that I love. Because it has J.G. Hertzler, who I'd met, who played Martok in the um, DS9, where he mentions about the Klingon caste system. How essentially Klingons were a caste. There was like the engineers and then the musicians and the artists. But then there were, were the warrior caste. And the warrior caste was at this time taken over. So I'd like to see in Discovery that, because I like this idea, okay, of the fact that the Klingons weren't all that imperialistic and honour-bound at that point. They were a bit more diverse. I would like to see more of that if they, if, you know, are going down that road. Further, I didn't realise, because I came to have kind of pure about this, it was set in the, um, in the past, before Star Trek, just before Enterprise, if you will, before Kirk. I wanted it to be, okay, maybe just me, okay, but I want to see a Star Trek series after, um, what's his name, Spock went back in time in Nero, when the parallel universe is split, okay, and basically Spock is now in a parallel universe, and then, you know, that, that kind of thing. I wanted to see that kind of darker enterprise, a darker Starfleet. You know, um, we're kind of friends and I, we were just um, talking about, say if they um, souped up, brought back DS9, 
but made it totally different, but had the same characters' names, but obviously a bit more twisted and darker, which would be was quite funny, you know, and quite twisted. And Michael Dawn would have to be in it. I, oh, also in this, I want Michael Dawn to have a character somewhere. In one episode, he can play a high ragging Klingon officer. I still call him Worf, because in Star Trek VI, The Unscovered Country, Michael Dorner's Wolf actually appeared as his um, great-grandfather, Colonel Wolf, which I thought was a bit of a nice touch. At that point, I I couldn't Star Trek a little bit mixed. I watched the original series, and I didn't actually watch any of the films, really, but then I saw The Next Gen, and I saw, got into it in season three after the, sorry, season four after the best of both worlds, and I didn't even know what the Borg were. I had to go back and actually watch those. So, it was a season three or season four, whatever, okay? So, but my first episode I ever saw of DS9, so the next gen was Family, and uh, the one straight after the best of both worlds, which kind of threw up a lot of who are these people, but I started watching it from the beginning and really, really enjoyed it. So, I like the look of this Star Trek. Now, it's a bit of a contradiction, however, because there was this big thing in um, Turnabout Intruder, episode of the next gen, where they said that women can't be starship captains. Now, obviously, this contradicts that, which is a good thing. I believe the first time we see a female captain in Star Trek was Star Trek DS9. It was Geordie's mother, and it was Madge Sinclair, okay, from Coming to America. She's on many, many films, but top of my head. So, I like the look. So, but this contradicts that, which is a good thing, which is a good thing. Now, let me put up the cast list, okay, just to kind of get some detail on who the cast are. Now, this one is interesting. It's just the protagonist in is the lead is not the captain, it's the first officer, which is a Seneca Martin Green as, and this is weird, Michael Burnham. Now, okay, Michael obviously is a boy's name. Maybe it's pronounced Michelle, or actually is it Michaela? Just drop the A. First officer of the USS Discovery, referred to as number one. She's a human who was raised by Vulcans. Now, that is an interesting backstory, and I cannot wait to see that explored. Because in the Star Trek universe, adoption happens quite often. You have Wolf, who was raised by human parents, which is kind of contrasting between his ideas of the honour Klingons, which when you meet them, they're not really that honourable, and the humane side that's raised him. So that's a nice contrast. Yes, Wolf is my favourite DS9 character, and the next gen too. Okay. Um, so, yeah, call number one, because that was Miriam. Michelle Barrett Woodenbear's character in the pilot episode, who I met and she was lovely. Okay, um, James Frain as Sarek, okay, a Vulcan astrophysicist and the father of Spock. Nice little contrast because you can see that um, Sarek, he's kind of interested in humans, which would eventually make, you know, eventually he'd marry Amanda. And then actually, so he's, even though he'd been a Vulcan, he'd be a bit dismissive of Vulcans, so dismissive of humans, so. He would have an interest in them, which would carry on to eventually his wife. Maybe you might even see him actually meeting his wife in the show. It'd be quite nice. Um, Tony Serbico as Anderson. Malik Perlinko as Namba. Now, this one's interesting. Doug Jones as Saru, a science officer. Now, uh, a member of species created for the series. Interesting, because there's a wealth of Star Trek... Um, Characters and history you can kind of pick from, really. But it's Doug Jones. Now, Doug Jones is a sapien in Hellboy, and he's a fantastic actor, and he's a fantastic um, contortionist, too. He means he's in his 50s, but he does not look it. So, I'd like to see what he brings to this table, but this is the best thing, okay? I, I'm biased here, okay? Michelle Yeoh as Philippa Gregu, I believe it's pronounced, Captain. Fantastic casting. I like the fact that okay, this is such a diverse cast as well. You know, there's, and the fact is, well, Michelle Yeoh is Michelle Yeoh, and she's marvellous and everything. But this kind of, you know, it's a more diverse cast. I like, you know, this kind of return of Starfleet from a different angle, if you will. So, uh, but the thing is, so, can I, logically, it be Enterprise, Discovery, the original series, the next gen, yeah, okay, canically, that's that's it, okay. So, how does Enterprise fit in to all of this? I mean, are they going to reference Enterprise? Are they going to mention Archer? I'd like to see that kind of explored too. That's just me. Now, visually, this looks beautiful. This looks absolutely amazing, and special effects look good. And one thing I like is that this feels like a Star Trek show. So, it's nice to see Star Trek back 
on the small screen because I think that's where it really belongs. The films are good, okay. Um, okay, really? Okay, fine. Some of the films are good. <laughs> all your no all your even number ones normally are. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, this... Um, this looks, this feels like stuff, to me Star Trek belongs on a, a small screen, Star Wars belongs on a big screen. That's just my own theory of this. Star Wars, Star Trek debate, doesn't really matter. Um, so this looks like Star Trek and I'm actually buzzing for this. Everyone was a bit dismissive but hey, we've waited a long time for a new Star Trek show, give it a goddamn chance. So anyway YouTubers, sign off and take care. Mwah. Bye now.